All right, this um, look, looks like we're uh, about to begin here. Uh, welcome from my side to this um, um, brief session about uh, the history of uh, one of the longest lived open source projects in, in the Java ecosystem, uh, the Spring framework specifically, and the Spring ecosystem in its wider, um, wider form. So uh, um, this is an impossible mission, I'll, I'll be frank up front. Uh, there's so much in these 15 years, uh, I can only give a very brief personal selection of highlights and milestones, um, and I'm totally up, up for that. So my own background is, of course, uh, that I was a co-founder of the Spring Framework Project, so I've been experiencing every single one of those 15 years um, very, very intimately, and it all started with uh, uh, this book, uh, the J2E Design and Development book, which I uh, uh, read over Christmas New Year break, um, 2002 to 2003. It, it only came out in uh, uh, like December 2002. So I, uh, I really liked what I, I saw in that book. Uh, there was, uh, this is of course a, like a huge one, right? 650 pages or whatever. Um, so there was a lot of good content in there, a lot of good design advice, a lot of very practical, very pragmatic advice for how to build modern day Java enterprise applications at that time. Uh, but there was also a quite fully baked sketch of a framework. There was even a, a prototype download with quite a bit of code already. Um, uh, with a quite fully baked JDBC template, some uh, uh, the, the beginning of what turned into the Bean Factory in the application context, and the beginning of a web application framework now known as Spring Web MVC. But it didn't have any of those names, and it wasn't really complete yet. Um, it lived in a download uh, package com.interface21 that you could get from from the book's website on the publisher's uh, page for the book, right? Which is like, um, yeah, I mean it's nice, but you can't really you can't really adopt it at that point. So uh, I got in touch with Rod on the feedback forum um, on, on, on the Rocks website back then and asked him whether he would consider turning it into a proper open source project, a public, fully managed uh, open source project. And that's exactly what we did after a bit of discussion about the name, because it didn't have a name back then. We settled with uh, Spring as a name, with Spring Framework as the fully canonical name. Back then on SourceForge, the GitHub of the times, you need to have a, a, a project name on SourceForge. It's hard-coded for the lifetime of the project, so you better get the name right. We spent a lot of time on that name, uploaded uh, the initial prototype that came as a download with the book, and um, I got into a manic phase of completing that uh, uh, the basic idea of a framework. Uh, many of the uh, pieces that we now know, Spring AOP, uh, and many other pieces, the factory bean model, uh, actually came after the book in that first half of two, uh, 2003. And it turned into uh, the first public download, Spring Framework 0.9, under that name, in June 2003, which was already, at that point, pretty complete for what we um, initially envisioned. Uh, but of course, then along came a lot of feedback. Other readers of the book, uh, people starting to um, to um, to try these uh, these early releases, and uh, um, myself as the release manager ever since the 0.9 release, uh, experienced very very directly uh, how uh, um, well how how important feedback really is. The, uh, turning it into an open source project was the key step to take here. And a Spring Framework Audit 9 was only the beginning. Uh, the, we turned it into Spring Framework 1.0 milestone releases very quickly, moving on to a GA release in early 2004. Of course, at the time, that was largely XML bean definition based. Uh, but in, in this generation, only a little bit later, we had uh, already the first annotation support. Uh, the transactional annotation actually dates back to Spring Framework 1.2, um, which might you might not be aware, uh, uh, but it, it of course was a, a bit of complex to set up at the time. None of the convenience of later releases was available quite yet. Uh, to give you a little bit of context, uh, we of course were already in the early days of the Java open source ecosystem. Uh, there was uh, Hibernate, there was of course the early days of Tomcat, there was uh, Jetty, and uh, Eclipse just about got started at that time. The Eclipse would turn into the Eclipse Foundation later on. Uh, back then, of course, just the IDE. Uh, but in particular, Tomcat and Chetty, still very much with us today, um, 
um, predate Spring. Hibernate just uh, predates Spring by a very little. They, they co-evolved for, for quite a long time. So this was already turning into an open source ecosystem as we know it today. Uh, we kept writing books. There was one in between uh, the, the uh, J2 uh, development without DGB book that I, uh, I personally co-authored with Rod. And then there was this one shortly thereafter as the first really spring specific book, spring from one to two specific book. A lot of effort, uh, all, all of the five authors shown uh, here uh, basically concluded that this was the last book they would ever work on and they would rather focus on open source development work. Uh, we kept supporting books later on, uh, book projects by other authors, by c community authors. Uh, we, none of us uh, participated in a book project directly anymore. Uh, we were manically working towards Spring Framework 2.0, uh, which was already the, the first like really like professionally launched generation of Spring with a, with a, a countdown on the website and a little bit of marketing around it essentially. Um, the uh, to the do release was still very XML oriented. It uh, introduced schema support, the configuration namespaces. Uh, it introduced deep SPJ integration. Um, shortly thereafter, in Spring Framework 2.5, we also started introducing uh, very, uh, very f uh, features with a, a lot of relevance uh, up until today. Uh, component scanning, the uh, at auto wide annotation, uh, the qualifier model, all of these things actually date back to 2007 in the Spring Framework 2.5 release. And 2.5 also got uh, the first cut of uh, back then called at MVC, basically Spring Web MVC's uh, annotation based controller model. At controller, at request mapping dates back to um, 2007. There was talking about marketing. Um, in the meantime, we've been a VC, uh, we, we've turned into a VC-funded company called SpringSource, and uh, SpringSource had a marketing department, not only a larger, uh, larger American sales force, but in particular also a, a marketing department based in the US. And uh, th this is an indication for what came out of that department occasionally. Weapons for the war on Java complexity with like Spring battleships and TC server battle tanks and DM server fighter plane, so TC server was our Tonga distribution. DM server was an OSGI based runtime environment that we were working on at the time, turned into Eclipse Virgo a few years later. Um, but anyway, these things attack complexitania with, uh, I don't know what, right? It's, I, I in, my, in my memories, I, I, I get the point, right? I get what they meant to say, but uh, um, the tools and visual indications that they used to express this is very American, let's put it like that, right? A very US American. Um, so um, uh, this, this was, of course, corporate marketing. Uh, we relied a lot on um, community engagement as well. And uh, our ecosystem grew into a, uh, this is actually an original <laughs> graphic from the Times. Um, it grew into a pretty uh, sophisticated arrangement. We had uh, projects uh, like Spring Webflow, Spring Web Services, originating as sort of externally started uh, or sometimes also internally started uh, sister projects of, of, uh, of the core framework. There was Spring Security externally started, brought into uh, our ecosystem. Uh, and there were TC Server and, and DM Server Virgo down there. Uh, this was already a pretty rich arrangement, pretty much the way it is right now with Spring Data, Spring Boot, Spring Cloud as separately organized projects with dedicated project teams. Um, this is pretty much the way we still work. Um, so every one of those kind of projects or project umbrellas has its own dedicated team, its own dedicated lead. This turned into Spring Framework 3.0, uh, launched at the end of 2009. In the meantime, we actually uh, got acquired by VMware just about that time. Uh, Spring Framework 3.0 is a very, very important release in Spring's history. Um, it introduced many concepts that are still the mainstream programming and configuration model uh, that we are using today. Uh, like the former prototype for our configuration class is called Java Config. It got merged into Spring Framework 3.0 proper. So at configuration, at bean, at value, they date back to that. Spring MVC kind of reinvented itself within its architecture as a REST endpoint model. So uh, full REST support at path variable, all of this stuff dates back to uh, Spring Framework 
and of course, uh, a lot of other goodness uh, in, in the 3.x line. So just an indication that this model dates back to late 2009. Uh, it's basically ni nine years old now, uh, and it's still very much uh, the reference point today. So um, moving forward a little bit faster in our history here, we have uh, Spring Framework 4.0 as the first Java 8 oriented release that we ever shipped. Um, Java 5 was, of course, very significant a few years before with the introduction of generics, with the introduction of annotations, inspiring us and giving us tools as framework designers that we could work with and that we could uh, uh, really be innovative with. In Spring Framework 4, though, this inspiration was JDK 8. Um, and since JDK 8 was quite late in its release, we actually shipped before JDK 8 against the JDK 8 preview build that we built our binaries with. Don't tell anyone. But as of a Spring Framework 403 in March 2014, when Java 8 was officially released, it's all built by official public GA builds. So this was, of course, a typical Spring Framework release in the sense of not requiring Java 8. If you're running it on Java 8, you got a perfectly fine, very Java 8-oriented development experience. Felt almost like a Java 8-based framework to you. Uh, but the framework itself was Java 6 based, ran perfectly fine on Java 6 and 7 internally, automatically adapted to whichever Java generation it was running on. Uh, a concept we've been using before, and this is a fine example uh, where we're still applying it. It's also the foundation for Spring Boot, um, for, for the Spring Boot project, uh, basically a uh, full, rich configuration and dependency management arrangement with many tools that are particularly, particularly useful in microservice architectures, uh, self-contained deployment, embedded, Tomcat, JD, Undertow. Um, uh, kind, kind of there's a lot of goodness in Boot. Um, and Spring Framework 4, though, kind of co-evolved with uh, the early versions of Boot. So uh, Spring Framework 4, though, provides many of the features and the tools that Spring Boot, that enable Spring Boot to do what it is doing. Uh, the uh, Spring Framework 4.0 did a, a few further things. It, uh, this was our mission. Spring Framework 4.0 4.3 really our, our mission was to refine the annotation-based programming model, shaping up a few of the details and kind of uh, uh, um, uh, the nuances of it. Uh, so bringing it to the way we know it now since 4.3 with the specific mapping annotations in Spring MVC, for example. So moving on to uh, basically the present, we released uh, Spring Framework 5.0 uh, about a year ago with a Java 8 baseline now. So actually requiring Java 8, not just uh, supporting it, uh, optionally supporting it at runtime. And uh, bringing in uh, forward-looking support for JDK 9 and higher. We actually rolled JDK 10 support into the 5.0x line. Spring Framework 5.1 is the first release officially supporting JDK 11 now. Um, and both the baseline and the JDK, the JDK 8 baseline and the JDK 11 support are the primary focus of my technical talk later this afternoon, Spring Framework 5.1 and JDK 8 and 11. Um, it also brings servlet for the DAO integration, bean validation to the DAO integration here, so the Java E8 API level. Optionally, though, because in practice, there's a lot of Java E7 out there. The framework also adapts to the API level it finds. And we have two major feature themes. Functional API design, functional bean registration, functional bean retrieval, and reactive architectures, primarily reactive web architectures in the form of our new uh, web stack called Spring Webflux. All of this, of course, also materializes in Spring Boot 2.0 and the recently released Spring Boot 2.1 now, uh, very immediately. There's a lot of uh, um, there's a lot of inspiration that made it into uh, into these feature themes. As you may imagine, functional API design is inspired by Java 8, by Java util collection streams, by Lambda expressions, by method references, those new Java 8 features, language features, and API design features. And it's also inspired by Kotlin as a kind of new first class language that we're supporting next to uh, Java itself, of course, and to Groovy. Uh, we are embracing Kotlin now, and the Kotlin function model is also a strong inspiration, uh, in particular uh, in, in its particular design, exploring its strengths and uh, uh, idiomatically supporting Kotlin is very much a feature theme in its own right in this generation of spring. To uh, the point of reactive web architectures, um, we, uh, we had to evolve from where we were, and we also wanted to kind of um, keep 
the existing servlet-based Spring MVC stack are totally in place as kind of the mainstream model. So we decided to introduce a parallel stack called Spring Webflux, Spring Framework 5 effectively ships two versions of a web stack. There's a lot of commonality, same annotations, similar uh, semantics, similar design underneath, quite a bit of reuse as well. But in the end, both of those stacks let the strengths of the particular model shine through. The servlet-based stack is still a, still a servlet-based stack. Um, Spring MVC can expose HTTP servlet requests. It runs within the servlet threading model. It integrates with all of the servlet-based libraries, rendering uh, engines, template engines out there. And it can run on any server container, be it Tomcat, be it Jetty, be it a full-blown Java EE server. Whereas Webflux is quite different in its architecture. A non-blocking, not only asynchronous, but fully back pressure driven uh, architecture based on the reactive streams abstraction, being able to run on Netty as an asynchronous uh, kind of uh, HTTP kernel or, or a networking kernel underneath, the most powerful and uh, uh, most sophisticated networking stack uh, that we have on the JVM. It can also be adapted to Tomcat's core or Chetty's core or Undertow's core. Um, using Tomcat, Chetty or Undertow in particular, not as servlet engines, but as, as kind of what they really are, HTTP engines, HTTP kernels, adapting a reactive streams based, uh, callback based, back pressure driven, um, processing model on top. So uh, uh, this was, um, in, in essence, uh, what we decided to do, not trying to abstract kind of the differences between those architectures. The architectures are so different that uh, it's worth um, shipping two dedicated stacks uh, with uh, the strengths of, of each stack shining through. All right, um, and that's what we are. Essentially, Spring Framework 5.0 uh, out for a year already. Spring Framework 5.1 and the corresponding Spring Boot 2.1 very recently released. Um, driven, inspired by a, the latest JDK generation 11 here, shipping the latest reactive stack underneath. Um, and of course, uh, also already being the basis for the next iteration, Spring Framework 5.2. I'll elaborate a little bit more about that in my in my other talk this afternoon. Uh, so thanks for your attention. This was a quick tour through uh, 15 years of spring. Uh, I can only conclude with, uh, uh, it's been a privilege on my side and a pleasure to, uh, to guide the framework, the core framework through those 15 years. Um, I'm still signing off every single release, every single maintenance release in every branch. I started doing this with 0.9. I still do this with 5.3 and 5.0.11 and 4.3.21. In uh, two weeks' time, I'm a bit of a control freak in that respect. Um, but it's, uh, it's, of course, very um, fulfilling in the form, right? It's great to see uh, that the frameworks manage to um, uh, do good things for a lot of people, uh, to uh, uh, prove itself to to be useful even after 15 years. And uh, it managed to reinvent itself in some form several times across those 15 years. All right, thanks for your attention. Enjoy the rest of the conference. Maybe see you later this afternoon.